Getting to your first $100,000 is, according to most millionaires, the hardest part of the journey. And if you haven't reached this goal yet, chances are you also find it hard to get there. So in this video, I'm going to reveal why it's supposed to be harder, how is it going to become later, and what is the easiest path to reach your first $100,000, even if you don't start a million dollar business like Alex or Mosi. At a Berkshire Hathaway shareholder meeting in the 90s, a young man has Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's partner, for his best advice on creating wealth. Charlie Munger's quote became one of the most famous quotes in finance, and was, the first hundred thousand dollars is a bitch, but you gotta do it. I don't care what you have to do, if it means walking everywhere or not eating anything that wasn't purchased with a coupon. Find a way to get your hands on a hundred thousand. After that, you can ease off the gas a little bit. First of all, how is it that you can make money? There are basically two ways the way of the employee and the way of the entrepreneur. Obviously, if you want to make tons of money in a relatively short period of time, the best way is to start a business. But it's also harder. According to the data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, approximately 20% of small businesses fail within the first year, 30% by the second year, and so on, up to a 17% failure rate after a decade. The way of the employee instead is basically saving and investing. All that said, in this video, we're going to focus on the case that you don't have a business, and we are going to discuss how you get to your first 100,000, assuming that you have a regular job. Coming back to Munger's quote, you can see that you have to assume that your first 100,000 will come from savings, not from investments. And this is what's fascinating because people typically believe that in order to get to 100k, you need to be good at investing or have particular skills. But the truth is, your investment results are not going to make a dent at the beginning. Now, I created a tool in Google that basically tells you how much of your portfolio is your savings and how much is the return from your investments. Let's say, for example, that you're saving $15,000 a year and you invest them in the total stock market, for example, through VTI, which gives an average return of 7%. After six years, you're going to have reached $114,000. But the interesting thing is that 78% of it will be comprised of pure savings and only 22% of investment returns. And here you can see that the percentage of your portfolio, which is your savings, is going to be higher than the returns for almost 20 years. Let's say now that you want to get to $100,000 faster. So you decide to invest like $30,000 per year. You're going to need three years to get to $100,000 with a 7% return. And savings this time are going to be 87% of your portfolio, not 78 like before. The point I'm making here is that getting to your first 100K, except if you start a business, is rarely from investment gains. Another point I want to make is that the faster you want to save 100K, the more you rely on savings and the less important investment returns become. Now, the beauty is that after you get to your first 100,000, it's going to be much easier because the compound effect is going to start kicking in. Let's assume that you save $10,000 per year. To get to your first 100,000, you're going to need 7.8 years. But to get 100,000 more, you're just going to need 5.1 years, then 3.8, 3, and so on. And this is, by the way, assuming that you always save the same amount every year. But if you increase your salary over time, you're also going to be able to save more. And all this process is actually going to speed up even more than this. But now, how do you get to $100,000? If you don't start a business, you're going to go the slower but safer road of the employee. And here there are three important steps that are going to take you there. And I call it ACI, automate, cut expenses and increase income. All right, step number one is going to be automating your savings. This one, I promise, will change your life if you use it. And it's the first step if you want to get serious about getting to your goal. The first thing you want to do is decide how much you can save every month. If you want, of course, you can use the tool I showed you before, and I'll make it available to you for free from the link in the description below. Now, what you're going to do then is set up an automatic transfer from your checking account to a savings account or a brokerage account that you're going to use for investing. Typical brokerage accounts that you can even open with your phone are Webull, M1 Finance or Robinhood. If instead you want to get to 100,000 without investing, which as we've seen is almost the same at least to get to 100,000, you can automate the transfer to a high yield savings account. Opening a high yield savings account is extremely easy. If you just Google best high yield savings account, usually you're going to find the website bank rate.com, which is pretty good. And inside, you're going to find a list of accounts that, as you can see, get you 3%, 4%, sometimes even 5% returns without even having to invest. Now, many people ignore this step of automating because they think they can have everything under control. But the truth is, psychologically, our brain works in a way that if we see a certain amount of money in our account, we're probably going to spend it, or at least we'll do everything we can to spend it. So it's better to just have in your account what you're going to need for rent, for food, plus something for entertainment. But important is that you define as quickly as possible how much you're going to be able to save every month and you set up this system 
so that the money leaves the account every month after you get your paycheck. As they say, out of sight, out of mind. Now, a good amount to start with is at least 10% of your paycheck. But to be honest, the more the better. I'm personally saving more than 50% every month. And of course, this way you get your goal much faster. In case you decide to send the money to a brokerage account instead of savings account, my second tip is to open a Roth IRA account. You can do it in like half an hour through your brokerage account. And the advantage is that whatever after-tax money you invest through the Roth IRA is going to grow tax-free. And if you withdraw it after retirement, you're gonna get the whole return tax-free. One last thing you should do to improve your finances and automate the whole process is to subscribe to the channel and click the ring bell. Jokes aside, it'd be automatically notified of new videos without any effort. So, what do you have to lose? All right, the second thing that you need to do is cut expenses. This is definitely not going to be easy, but it's gonna get you to your goal so much faster. So you need to figure out what you can cut out immediately from your expenses. You've probably heard already that three expense categories are responsible for spending almost 50% of your total income. And these are housing, transportation, and food. If you're a young and flexible person, I think there is a lot you can do on housing. For example, you can live with a roommate, live with your parents for a bit, maybe just take a smaller place if you want to live alone. Of course, you're still gonna be kind of forced on a certain cost based on where you live but generally speaking there is always a way to find a smaller place or a place with a better rent now moving forward cars and transportation is without the shadow of a doubt where most people waste more money and i think people really don't realize the power of depreciation so basically if you graph the depreciation of a car within 20 years you see that the younger the car is the faster it will lose value so buying a new car is a terrible idea because the moment you drive the car out of the dealership you already lost like 10 15 percent of value even though the car is theoretically just as good as new. On the other side, buying a car that is too old will give you higher maintenance costs. So the sweet spot is usually a car that is around four to seven years old. And even better than that, of course, is if you can use public transportation. I did an entire video on how to reduce your car costs, where I go into details on all the different expenses you're going to have with a car. And I tell you not only a way to reduce each of these expenses, but even a way to profit from your car. I'm not gonna repeat the whole content here. You can check this video later if you want, and I will link it in the description below. All right, food is another big expense. Dining out in a restaurant, for example, is in pole position. So I definitely try to cook my own meals if I'm used to spending money in restaurants. I have to be honest, I personally spend almost no money on dining out because I like cooking. That's my Italian spirit. But it doesn't stop there. There is an example that for some people is crazy, but in reality, I think it isn't. Well, sometimes I travel for work and to be fast, I go to places like McDonald's. Now, I have the McDonald's app on my phone and there are constantly great discounts and offers if you use the app. Like, I get two burgers at the price of one or I can get a coffee for 99 cents instead of 2.29. I mean, yeah, you're saving a couple of bucks, okay. It doesn't seem like a lot of money, but if I manage to save like 30% of my dining out, maybe instead of $150 a month, I spend $100. The thing is, it's not about how much you're saving with a single coupon, but it's the discipline that you're building. You don't get to $100,000 in savings by buying everything you want without looking at the price. All right, step number three is increasing your income. First of all, you need to ask yourself, do I like my job? Do I wanna keep my job? Do I see myself in a different field? So if you want to work as an employee because you don't wanna have the trouble or the risk of starting a business, the best way is by increasing your main income and creating other income flows. First of all, talk to your employer about setting up a 401k if you haven't done it. It's one of the best and easiest way to double your money because for every dollar that you will deposit on your 401k, your employer will also deposit up to one dollar himself. Then, if you love your job, in my experience, you're gonna constantly improve and be promoted or get raises. If you don't, Talk to your employer and ask for a raise. You need to be able to explain why you should be getting a raise. And usually the best arguments are your skills. If you don't get a raise, either you're not as valuable as you think and you should improve more, or maybe it's really not able to pay you more and you should think about switching company. Usually getting a new job is gonna get you a better salary. So sometimes it's even better to just find a new job instead of asking for a raise because asking for a raise is like a sales pitch. You can not just ask double as much as before, but you might be able to achieve that with a new job. Now, another thing that you can do without any effort is selling out what you don't need. This is not gonna make you rich, but most people I know who live paycheck to paycheck still spend hundreds of dollars every month on clothes, phones and other stuff. So I'm pretty sure you can find things you don't need the live one in your home, just find them and sell them on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist or eBay. Now, I believe, I really believe this, that if you do love the field that you work in, you should invest all of your effort into getting better at it. But if you don't love what you do, but for some reason you can change it, then at least use your free time to increase your income. And if you don't want or can start a business, 
you should consider starting a side hustle. It might be as simple as a service-based business like dog sitting, window cleaning, lawn mowing, which are all businesses you can start with practically no skills. Or you might start something with higher potential for which you have to build some skills. You might be offering some services on Skillshare, or maybe you're a creative person and you can sell something on Etsy, maybe print on demand, which is easy and risk-free. I mean, you have millions of ways to earn some money on the side in your free time. And the cool thing is that you can learn everything for free from the internet. You're gonna build new skills skills and you open new doors that might get you to places you never thought of. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. If I could give you any value with it, please drop a beautiful like to the video. I would really appreciate it. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in finance and investing. Don't forget it if you need it, you can download for free the tool that I showed you before. I will link it in the description below. Well, thank you very much, guys. Take care. I wish you a great day or evening. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.